Nisambura Gnaka. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm not quite as old as Konai, so uh, as a result, I'm a bit more intimidated <laughs> than she is. Um, but it's my task uh, this afternoon just to give you a very brief um, oversight of, of the project. I don't want to take up too much of your time because there's some more exciting um, speakers and features coming after me. Just to say that this, this project actually began in 2017. So we're, we're almost three years, or we are three years uh, uh, down the line, and I think in some ways still trying to find uh, uh, our way. But it came out um, from ecumenical research that was conducted from 2014, and uh, that, that research uh, found that there was no Christian framework um, for the region, and particularly for churches, uh, to be able to address with confidence uh, economic development issues and uh, the what what we've come to call the ecological crisis. Um, so, how to help churches really address these issues uh, at a leadership level, but also at the pulpit on on Sundays. So, this was the how the the project was um, uh, became. Um, what what we also know um, is that. To address the project's premise, which is that there is an ecological crisis, uh, churches alone cannot do this. Uh, but we also know that churches are essential to, to help address this, um, this crisis that, that we see in, in the region, but also globally. Uh, so what the, the project has sought to do is to establish uh, a dialogue by bringing together theologians, church leaders, economists, uh, cultural experts and sages, artists, educationalists, uh, politicians, CSO activists, policy makers, um, and also members of the conservation community. And it's also brought together different generations. Uh, we saw that with, with the video um, and we have uh, a, a very dynamic group of young people as well as a dynamic group of older people involved in, in the project, as well as uh, diverse genders, which is something we, we talk about in the project and that's something that's really important for the region uh, to address. Um, and this is really to, to develop a, a much needed conversation about the present and future of the region. So in some ways, when we look at, at this project and we talk about, Francis was just talking about, we've, we've had these conversations or some versions of these conversations uh, some, some years ago and, and Konai's uh, poem from the late 1970s still resonates today. Um, but it's, it's, about, it's about a journey and working together to, to a better present and a better future um, together. So where do we stand um, uh, today? What or what have we done? So we've held regional conversations. We've had uh, some, some regional meetings where we brought in uh, a range of, of uh, uh, diverse uh, perspectives, people working in all sorts of different uh, sectors, and of course uh, theologians, because at the basis of this is is a theological thought in the Pacific that, that's been leading uh, the, this uh, change through um, the Pacific Theological College. We've also had uh, national conversations, including quite a difficult one in Papua New Guinea, um, where uh, with, with churches and, and civil society activists um, and bringing everyone into a room talking about uh, uh, gender issues, uh, talking about uh, environmental issues, political, economics. We had politicians uh, also part of that conversation. And it was a difficult conversation, uh, but probably, uh, uh, again, a much uh, needed one. Um, and the, the result of that conversation is impetus to, to keep working uh, with the PNG Council of Churches and the Catholic Church in, uh, in Papua New Guinea to look at uh, developing uh, uh, ecological framework and ecological policy for the churches. Um, so 
Today, we, we stand in a slightly different place from what was planned, uh, also because of uh, the, the pandemic and COVID. We had planned uh, for this uh, project to, to be part of the forum leaders meeting in, uh, that was planned in Vanuatu. Um, and there were, there were supposed to be three days of, of uh, activities and, and discussions around well-being, uh, sustainability, and, and including the ecological framework for development. So that didn't happen, so we redirected. I won't use the word pivot, <laughs> because uh, I've heard it way too many times, but so we've redirected a lot of our, our activities. Um, and... Um, so as a result, we've had a, a range of, uh, of public webinars with speakers from, from the region, and many of those speakers and, and those webinars, which you, can, uh, which you can go back to now, uh, are also authors of uh, the book, particularly the, the Visions book. Um, so really, we, we don't talk about this as being a project anymore. We talk about it as being a movement. Um, because it, it's, it's not about uh, something being funded, but it's about all of us working together to find new directions and to, uh, to, to th think from a range of different perspectives so that we enrich, uh, enrich our thought. And like Dame Meg Taylor said, this is a way also for uh, us collectively to contribute uh, to policy making and even to re regional decision making. Um, I think we, we've, we now have achieved, or the project, uh, which is now a movement, uh, has, has many um, uh, strong voices, um, which will help us continue working with uh, the reweavings work with churches. Um, and we've also finalized the thinking or laid out the fundamentals of what the ecological framework for development is, and that's in, in one of the books that we're seeing uh, today. And that took a, took a long time, because it's, it's, it's not easy to, to really bring theology, uh, cultural values, cultural thinking perspectives, and economics, and... Uh, uh, environmental thinking together, but that's what the the ecological framework for development strives to do, um, and it lays the basis upon which we can now build practical actions. Um, so this should also be of assistance to one design national accounts or redesign national accounts. Um, which, which we know are problematic, not just in the region, but, but globally, but particularly probably in the region even more so, uh, to help churches rethink their mission uh, so that they can better address the issues faced by their peoples and communities, and also to, to push the conservation community to better integrate spiritual and cultural values and practices in how they work as well. So just in, in conclusion, I would say that the voyage has begun. It's been a long voyage. Um, the destination is, is before us, uh, but we're on our way. Knock off.